All right, uh, today we're going to talk about match restarting. Uh, match restarting uh, is a doozy, I'm not going to lie. Uh, people have written books about starting, like it's, it's a lot, so this is going to be a pretty dense video, but you are going to learn a lot, so let's get right into it. Uh, in a match race start, there are two people generally on the approach, right? The leader, which is the boat in front, and the pusher, which is the boat behind. They'll be kind of lined up like this. That's how it should work if you're doing it correctly. Um, so the rule number one always pair up, right? Uh, a lot of the times people will start like this in a match race start. So they'll have a nice clean start, but they completely neglected the other boat, right? The other boat, yeah, they're having a bad start, they're late, but I would rather you be close to the other boat at go than far, and that's because we just want to practice uh, focusing on beating the other boat more than your own start. Okay, that is way more important. Um, so we want to pair up, get right next to the other boat, and then if we can prevent them from getting to the line, that's cool. Um, if we can, you know, we'll talk about maybe a push in a second. Okay, so this is called the playground. A lot of people call it that. It's the area to the right. It's very safe. So when you are sailing away from the line, you have the pusher behind, the leader in front. The leader can uh, jive around and get on the starboard and come back quite easily. Uh, on the other hand, if the, uh, this is called no man's land, a lot of people call it that, because if you're sailing away from it, uh, I can't really see my hands, but if you're sailing away from it, the uh, boat, the leader cannot jive because it's a starboard port, and the leader cannot tack because it's a starboard port. Um, and so, therefore, no man's land can be really scary, right? So the drill we're going to talk about at the end here is going to teach you how to navigate and get out of no man's land so you have the confidence to take risks in practice and push hard. Okay? So now let's talk about uh, winning positions in match racing. So number one, the, these kind of ranks, right? Number one is the crush start, being dead ahead. That's awesome. You've know, you got control over your opponent. You can react to whatever they do. You get in a bad air. It's awesome. It's also very unrealistic. Uh, if you guys are in equal ability, you will probably end up so we know one makes any major mistakes, both on the line, right? So we'll talk about these two situations. So number two is when we're with a gap. So here's us. And the reason this is so powerful is because we have control. Uh, white can't really tack. If they have to tack, then they'll have to take our stern, right? Uh, and if we need to go fast, we can always bear off with the bow down, right? So we kind of effectively have a pin, uh, and we have control over the opponent. Um, now the other one is tight lure. And tight lure is really great uh, in light air where your uh, backwind effects, like the bad air coming to windward of your boat, uh, is very strong. Okay, So light air is really good for tight lure, heavy air is better for windward of the gap. Right? Um, and the other thing uh, is you need to really remember is when you are tight lure to another boat, you need to keep your main very, uh, very in to keep your bow up. Uh, and you also want the gap, the sideways gap, to be like zero basically. You basically want to be touching. Uh, because if you're not, then you're not going to be affecting the other boat's breeze and affecting your steering as much. Uh, and in that case, like when you're starting as a tight boat, you're actually hit. You cannot tack. So we want to make sure we kind of get, you know, get in front of this other boat as quickly as possible or force them to tack away. That's why we need to be really tight. Okay. So um, now we are going to talk about uh, leading and pushing. Okay. So here's two boats. Uh, red is the leader. White is the pusher, and basically rules of thumb: uh, we want to lead to the line if it is late, or if, if the time is late, or if it is really light air. And that's because you go pretty slow in light air, um, and it, you know takes a while to get up to speed. Uh, and the other thing is, if you're you're late, then you will get a crush start by just rounding the boat if you're leading, right? So lead in late or light air. That should be pretty easy to remember because it's all L's. Uh, push. You push if uh, you feel you guys are early or if it's strong breeze. So if it's really windy, it's harder to slow down, right? And that increases the chance that the leader will be over early, okay? And that's one of the reasons, you know, one of the things that's good about pushing is you can push the other boat over early. Uh, the other thing that could happen is if, you know, they don't want to be over early, then they might sail to no man's land, and then you also are in a very strong position there, okay? So that's how pushing could be good. But if you're late, uh, for example, talk to you an example in a second, but if you're late uh, and you're, you know, the pushing boat, then you will get kind of crushed started on and that's not super fast. Um, so let's talk about it. So here's our situation. We have a leader and a pusher. Uh, if it were 15 seconds to go, you know, what would be a better position? 
and will probably be the, the leader, right? Because they will get a crush start. Now what if it's a minute to go? Well, it's probably the pusher because there's a higher chance the leader could be over early or you could force them into no man's land, okay? So that's pretty simple, final approach talk, right? Now let's talk about what to do while we're on the final approach. You know, we're coming into our spots, then we're gonna, uh, going to set up. So in, in match racing, I didn't write this, but please remember this. Uh, there's three phases, basically, right? The first phase of the start is where you pair up. The second phase of the start is where you go on your approach to the line, and then once you're inside the starting box and you're, you're doing you know, your kind of final preparations to go, that's the last phase, okay? So this would be the middle phase, this would be the first phase, and then we'll kind of we'll talk about the middle phase and then the last phase in this part, okay? So, fish tailing. Uh, we've done this a bunch on the reach, we've done this a bunch on the downwind. Uh, what we need to know is the pusher wants the boats out of sync. So if we're going behind each other, the pusher is going to go down, and the leader wants to stay in front of them, so they're going to go down too. When you see their tiller go down to react, we're going to go back up. Opens a lot of space, right? Now they you know, need to come up and you know, try and get a hook, but we're already very separated to windward. So this could be like a great starting position, but we're going to get, right? Pushing is really powerful. Okay, now let's try it again. So we'll go up. You know, they'll go up to try and hook us. We'll go down, they'll go down, now we have a hook, and we've got them, right? So we want to get them out of sync. Now what does the leader want to do? Well, the leader wants to get the boats in sync, right? So when the the leader goes, I'm sorry, the pusher goes down, the leader goes down two, right? And then the pusher goes up, the leader goes up two. We want to keep the space close as the leader um, while also kind of leveraging towards the lured side because we, you know, maybe hooking them, letting hook, uh, sorry, them getting a hook on us may not be the best thing, right? So let's just say stay ahead, stay in front, uh, and kind of match the steering, right? So if you're delayed in your reaction, so they go down and then we go down, this is what the pusher wants, right? Then we go up and then, you know, they stay down, right? Because we, we go up, they stay down, then we go down to try and get them, they go up and it just kind of goes back and forth, right? Eventually, you're gonna kind of get to, you know, what are our goals? So what does the pusher want? Well, uh, one cool thing would be the leader to be over, right? We push the leader over, awesome. But we're gonna talk about kind of how to get it out of that soon. So push the leader over, cool. Uh, number two is a hook, right? So we bait them by going low, then they go low, we go high, then they go high again, and then we can finally get the hook and bring them up, right? Hook is good. Uh, the other thing is when we're in the gap. So we've kind of gone through all those scenarios just now with my little hand boats. Um, now what does the leader do? Now this seems like the leader has a really crap position. Like they're having to react to what the pusher is doing. They don't have any, you know, anything to do or any defenses. Well, let's talk about it, right? What do we do if we get hooked? You know, it's kind of scary, right? Well, if we get hooked to windward of the line, we're going to, uh-oh, we're hooked, right? It's scary. We're going to just do a 360, right? So attack, jive and then we can actually become the pusher now. So we can go and get a hook right away, we can you know, start to push towards the line, uh, all sorts of stuff, right? Um, you could also, and we'll talk about this in a second, uh, step up. So what is step up? Well, stepping up is double tapping, essentially. Um, so you tack once, I'm sure you're here, so you get hooked on the line, you tack, you reach up the line, and you tack again, now you're Wait, where were the gap? So you're winning, right? So both of these positions, uh, or both of these responses are really important. So like, honestly, a lot of the times we might even, once we're kind of on um, getting near our final approach, if there's some time and we feel like we need to kill some more time, let the leader hook us, let them say the lure of us, become, uh, sorry, the pusher hook us, right? Either step up or do the circle and push again, right? Um, the other thing is, you know, if you're here, you can also step up and then push from above, which is a very powerful uh, position to be in, okay? And we're gonna talk about kind of in the continuation of this video, uh, another drill that is really important for, uh, for starting, and that will kind of teach you how to do this, okay? So step up, now how does the pusher respond to the leader stepping up? Do they just let them do it? No, uh, the pusher should attack at the same time when the leader steps up, and kind of now we're pushing them, you know, into the playground. And now the, uh, you know, the, the leader is probably going to drive around uh, and kind of continue the cycle, right? And this is a match racing called circling. So in a pure match race, when we're on a starboard sailing away from the line, uh, the boat in front.
boat's gonna drive around and you have the boat behind, then the boat, you know, behind is, or in front's gonna drive around and we're gonna circle, right? Circle, it's like a conveyor belt. Um, this doesn't really happen so much in team racing because the starts are really short. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about, you know, focus on this too much, but circling as a concept, good move, right?